Welcome back to The Helpful Home. I'm Sunday Dawn, and I just wanted to pop on here from the future. Um, I'm currently editing this video, and I just wanted to do a quick little intro, and although I'm going to get into this more in the video you're about to see, um, I wanted to pop on here and kind of explain that this ended up being the premiere of my Swedish death cleaning series that is going to be a massive undertaking on the channel this year. I think we're all going to learn a lot about ourselves during that process. Um, but it is, oh wow, it's so windy. Ooh. <laughs> it's Oregon in the winter for you. Um, sorry if that gets a little noisy. Uh, back on topic, this series by default started with Christmas decor. That isn't maybe where I would have started, but since I pledged to touch everything I own this year, every single thing I own this year, and really make a decision about whether it's serving the life I want to live, and if it would be something I really cared enough about to leave behind, um, uh, and Christmas was out. Like, it was time to clean up Christmas that the first video of January's Swedish death cleaning series just became Christmas decor by default. So um, there will be some big, massive Swedish death clean reveals throughout this process. Quite a few. I've got some skeletons in my closet that I will be just bearing for you all. Um, this one still should be a motivational, inspirational, um, you know, it's a taking down Christmas, cleaning, Swedish death cleaning, micro-organization, and then, um, yeah, like putting my house back together. So it's got a little bit of everything. It still is, honestly, a Swedish death cleaning video. I just wanted to kind of say, like, this one got a massive declutter last year. I went from 12 bins to 7. And this year I went from 7 bins and, like, several cardboard boxes, like, that things came in, down to 7, not all the way full bins. Um, but, yeah, I really went really deep into what I had chosen to keep, what I thought that I definitely wanted, and got real about some of those decisions. And I'm I'm very happy with how that went, and I'm happy to share that process. Um, but yeah, next week, I just kind of wanted to give a heads up of what's coming next week. After this video, I will get a bunch of requests for gallery wall tours and like photo display tours because I generally get a lot of questions about that and I have done one of those videos although um, I definitely do. I, the channel has grown by almost double since then so I upload on Mondays and Thursdays and Monday will be a gallery wall tour and tips and tricks on how to display your family's photos. So you know I've got some bookcases and some um, really nice displays and I will be doing that Monday and then Thursday will be another Swedish death cleaning video and that's going to be a much bigger beast than today. So we're getting into the meat of it Thursday and uh, and we're starting. We're starting today because it is it is on. The Swedish death cleaning is on and welcome to my madness. <laughs>
here's where I'm at. I am hot and sweaty. <laughs> Why is that so much work? Am I really getting old? Maybe. Um, yeah, so I've taken down everything that I used this year for my holiday decor, and I will say it's all staying. And so my number one tip is the best time to Swedish death clean your Christmas nonsense or any kind of organization is really after Christmas because I know I was very happy with my holiday decor this year. So I'm, I'm keeping it. But I will turn the camera around in a minute and show you my seven totes. Now listen, I'm down to seven totes from 12. So I was pretty proud of my seven totes. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I'm keeping the totes, but I'm gonna get real real about what's inside because anything that's inside those totes should technically go and most of them still have a lot of stuff inside. So I do plan on doing a, like a Swedish death clean intro video where I, I'm certainly not going to go over the whole book, but where I explain my take on it, uh, what, what the book said to me, why it spoke to me, and why I'm going to spend the next year touching every single thing I own. That's my pledge. I'm going to touch every single thing I own and make a decision about whether or not I want it in my life and in my home. Because as I said very quickly, in the get to know me tag, really the point of the book, my takeaway was how do you want to leave your space behind? That's sort of like your legacy, right? How do you want to leave your space behind? And why wouldn't you want to live in the space that you'd want to leave behind? I should get to enjoy the fruits of that labor, so I'm going to. And instead of just opening drawers and looking inside and deciding that that drawer looks okay or isn't that messy and so I can keep it all, I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to touch everything and make an honest decision about everything I own. Every paper, every piece of makeup, every childhood memory of my girls. And I'm really going to decide if I want it in this life and if it fosters the life that I want to live. I may be a grandma, but I got a lot of years left. This 44-year-old grandma has a lot of years left. So um, I'm going to do it now and not after 65, which was her original, I think the author's original stance was like, at 65, you should Swedish death clean. But then she wrote this beautiful book and talked about how Really, it was something she encouraged people to do before so that they really got to enjoy that. So that's my plan. That's my takeaway. And I, I'm i going to film a little bit of the going through process, but I'm mostly going to give you the after, show you how I got where I got with those decisions, and clean up Christmas. I'm going to Swedish clean up Christmas. Swedish death clean Christmas. <laughs> it's a little morbid, but I'm um, just the kind of morbid girl for that organization. So I will be back with an after and an afterthought. Also, I would just like to note that Lou is still terrified of the Nutcrackers. <laughs> he won't even look at them and he won't move. And I'm down to 15 Nutcrackers. I think I only have 15 this year, so I'm not doing too bad. I had 50. 15, not too shabby. Lou, tell me it gets worse before it gets better, bub. <laughs> he looks so forlorn, as am I. Oh shoot, he can't even get to his chair. <laughs> Lou likes to hang out in Dad's chair while Dad's gone at work, but alas, he can't even get there. There is a tote. Okay, so honestly, I've made a lot of progress, and I think I have freed up a whole tote, which will be great, because that village will be able to reside in said tote, and I'll be able to toss that tacky cardboard box it's been in all these years. I think I've actually sorted through everything, but boy, it looks worse than it did before I started. But honestly, at least now there is a method to the madness. So yeah, I think I'll walk you through the decisions I made and how I got there. Now bear in mind that uh, yeah, this is not round one. So. There are going to be areas of my life that have already been decluttered, as this one. I last year went from 12 totes to 7. And this is more of a micro declutter, but it still really, really did matter. I found lots of things I was holding on to for no reason other than they were attractive or they didn't take up that much space. And that is not my criteria anymore. You have to actually serve the life I love and the life I'm living if I want to even care to leave you behind when I'm gone. 
So let's see what made the cut. And right off the bat, let's start with something that is easy, even though they're beautiful. I have no sentimental attachment to these things. I have new placemats that match the new Christmas dishes, and I have a pillow I like better. So I love this pillow, I keep it every year, but it's a little bright for my taste, and I always just feel like it sticks out like a sore thumb. And I'm keeping this pillow. Wait for it, wait for it. I'm keeping the Nutcracker pillow, are you shocked? <laughs> What is with me and the Nutcrackers? Listen, my girls got gifted a Nutcracker every year after they were in the Nutcracker suite when they were just little. And um, it just took on a life of its own. They now have taken their Nutcrackers with them and I'm only down to my 15. By the way, Christine, my Disney queen, here is a picture of my babies from that Make-A-Wish Disney World trip. Oh, I can't believe that that was so long ago. Oh, I am really old. I just said I can't believe it was so long ago, and I literally almost said it seems like yesterday. But I guess if that's the sign of old age, then I'm there because that feels like yesterday. Ah, oh, we had a Christmas make-a-wish trip to the Magic Kingdom right after Madeline's kidney surgery, and so I just love that picture and all the holiday decor, and I put it out every year. And I just love it. It gives me the warm fuzzies inside. So now that village is going to be able to go into that tote. And I can get rid of that old cardboard box. Next, we're going to look at something quite a bit more difficult and sentimental. And my daughters are cringing right now. Listen, babies, it'll be okay. You can look. You can look. Hi, Phil Nerlu. <laughs> You finally got your chair. I literally had to scoot the tote so that he could get in the chair so that he could calm down. But this tote is considerably more difficult, even though I've already made a first pass through our Disney ornaments last year. I, you know, I, I thought I was brutal, but the truth is I don't, I mean, if I'm honest, I don't want any of the ornaments that are out. I kept them all for a different reason other than I wanted them or I loved them. So inside we have all of my husband's rocking horse ornaments. His mother bought him one every year when he was growing up. We have my husband's Star Trek and Star Wars ornaments. Uh, we used to put those all on the tree. And to be honest, I think next year I'm going to buy a small tree. My local Walmart neighborhood market grocery store carries like a real tree in a pot. And I almost bought one this year. And next year, I think I'm going to. And I'm going to light it. And I'm going to put all his ornaments on it on the table in the kitchen. And um, a couple of sentimental ornaments from my children's childhood. A turtle we bought from Hawaii. And the pickle that we used to hang on the tree. It's an old tradition. And then my daughter's princess gowns from the park. So I kept those because I have one granddaughter daughter so far. And, you know, there may be more. And I think they might, like, Rosie might like those now not just saving them forever. She, she may enjoy them now. Now what's left? Fair game. Girls, if you want any of these, take them. If not, they're going. I feel like possibly little Rosie might want Nightmare Before Christmas, but her mom might veto that. Often your kids will get married and want you to keep their crap, but they don't want it. So we'll see how that goes. Now this, I just kind of want to mention because this is something that happens to lots of people. Someone in our family passed away and their spouse that was left behind gifted these to my family. These are ornaments they purchased on their family trips to Disneyland that were special to them. And he really thought we would like them. And I do think they're beautiful. And I put them on the tree for years and I do like them. But they're just not my memory. They're his. And I know that he doesn't want them back. I, I know for certain he doesn't want the things back he gifted us. And I have other things that he gifted us that are more important. In fact, the globe right here that holds a very special place in our home and started the big globe collection that you see every week was that sister-in-law's. And um, those were her antique nesting tables and that was her globe. And my daughters played with it every time they went there. And when she passed away, my son or my brother-in-law said he really wanted us to take those. So I think I can let go of these ornaments that I know he doesn't want and they're just not my memory. They're his. So I'm going to let those go. And I'm going to let that guilt go. And same with these over here. A gift from someone when I was expecting. A gift from someone when I got a new house. And then someone gifted me this. Like, who wants... <laughs> I mean, it was cute and funny. But last Christmas, I got a 2020 ornament. Like, I don't want that memory. Ugh. I don't want it. 
Okay, this was the tough bin, but this is where I'm at with it. And girls, if you'd like any of these, let me know. Otherwise, they are going to go. And I feel really comfortable about it. Once I took them out, looked at them, and decided, I I'm serious, if I cared about those enough that I would want someone to have them after I was gone or, or that I needed them to take up space while I'm here, I just, yeah, they were easier to let go. So, bye-bye, princesses. And just quick for the record, you're all safe, Mr. Nutcrackers. You'll be just fine. And just to prove I'm not heartless, this is all of the priceless memorabilia, like the baby's first Christmas, our first Christmas together, ornaments from my childhood, ornaments from hubby's childhood, the ornaments your kids make in school, a mall Santa photo. Like, right? You have to have that. Come on, focus on those beautiful babies. You've got to have the obligatory mall Santa photo. I, you got to have it, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way, so I'm not heartless. I'm just not keeping anything that didn't move me. But, but those things, absolutely. A place in my heart and a place on my tree. But if I don't care about you enough to go on my tree, you're out of here, man. But when I say, like, okay, <laughs> real talk, when I say that this was sort of a micro-organization, you know, I'm getting my feet wet with Swedish death cleaning, that's because there are areas in my home that have had a pretty good declutter. And, you know, they're, they're just needing a really thorough go-through with a fine-tooth comb to really fine-tune it. And then there are places like that desk. <laughs> it's like... I, that desk is getting Swedish death cleaned. It's getting Swedish death murdered. Like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it, there is, there's going to be no prisoners. It's, I can't even tell you. Just because I have some, you know, crazy pantry organization and I'm super hyper organized with my food and Christmas decor and all these, these places you see that are hyper organized, you know. For every one of those, there's something like that. And that is what everyone needs to see. Like, you're real skeletons in your closet. So that desk, that's a real skeleton in my closet. And I'm dealing with you soon. And that's going to be like a four-parter. And I've already committed to myself. So let me commit it to you now. I will be dumping each of those drawers in the middle of that living room floor. Dumping. Take no prisoners. Emptying. And that is going to be a massive bonfire. Aunt sister, massive bonfire. I don't have time to shred all the papers we'll be shredding. We're going to be burning them and having a glass of wine. So I got distracted with a skeleton in my closet, but this is the tiny toss pile. This is my, um, this is the giveaway. So that's what I let go of, like, the beautiful... Uh, red, white, pearl, candy cane stripe ornaments. I have more than that that have already been boxed up and tissued, but that is that is the basic theme of my tree, and these are the ones that I'm just like, eh, they're junk. And then these three are actually, um, you know, I don't know. This was my take on it. I made these with my sister-in-laws right after I got married and my mother-in-law. She crocheted these, and we all put them together, and it was like a fun event together, and it was my first, I had four sister, three sister-in-laws, there was four of us, so, and I was the last. So it was like our first bonding thing. So I kept the two that match my tree. So sue me. You know, the OCD still is there. So I kept the two that match my tree, and these ones with the gold bows, I'm letting them go. There's no need to keep them all to save the memory. I'm keeping the two that match to save the memory. So sue me. That was my logic. And also, as a side note, I found us a mascot. This is Ava, after my dear Swedish friend, Ava Gnilla. And she gave her to me. I don't remember if her grandmother made it or if she was with her family and bought it at a bazaar in Sweden because so many of her things in her home are from both. So I will have to ask her, and I have not spoken to her about Swedish death cleaning. Now, she is a Swedish citizen who married a man from Nashville years and years ago. Both her boys are grown. She's been here for quite some time, but they spend months a year in Sweden, and um, her boys are both dual citizens, and uh, they spoke only Swedish in the home growing up. So she has not lost her accent and her home is full of all kinds of Swedish treasures. So, my dear Swedish friend, 
I think it's time to sit down with her and ask her her take on Swedish death cleaning. I honestly don't know, but I guarantee you she's going to have a whole lot to say about the commercialism in Christmas in the United States. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it might be it might be time for a chat with my Swedish friend about Swedish death cleaning. Stay tuned. And one last tidbit before my outro and final thoughts about day one of Swedish death cleaning in my home. Um, this is my first trip to Disneyland, again, to my sweet subscriber, Christine, my Disney queen. Um, this is the day I got hooked. <laughs> Five years old, I had not been uh, with my grandparents and sister aunt for very long. So life was a little tumultuous at this point. I Everything felt very up in the air and this place felt very safe and wonderful. And um, yeah, it was probably one of the first times I'd ever felt safe in my life up to that point. So um, yeah, that's probably when I got hooked and aunt sister made these for me this year. So I think I'm not going to pack them up. I think I'm going to hang them in my office. And hubby did the math. Christine, hubby did the math. So I should have, he texted to me. I'll give it to you in the outro. But he did the math on how many weeks of our life we've spent in Disney parks. <laughs> we'll have to compare. Okay, final reveal is Swedish death cleaning Christmas was a success. So we took down everything, Swedish death cleaned the heck out of it, and um, put everything back and gave it a good deep dust, gave it a good vacuum, and we should be ready for a light and airy fresh start to the new year. I always hate taking down Christmas, and I really enjoy leaving it up. We leave it up till just after New Year, but um, it does always feel like a really good, fresh, clean slate. I want to thank everybody for being here at the Helpful Home for this new Swedish Death Cleaning series. We will be uploading new videos every Monday and Thursday um, during the year of 2022. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful new year and we will see you Monday for our gallery wall tour with tips and tricks on how to display your favorite family memories. Till then, pick something to Swedish death clean and just start, start small, start big, heck, start big if you want, go big or go home. And uh, if you want to find me on The Helpful Home on Instagram, I would love for you to tag me and show me what you were inspired to Swedish death clean today. <laughs>